political experience versus leadership capacity. In 2012, Harvard Business Review published a research by Professor Gautam Mukunda. In the research, he studied political, business, and military leaders within America and Europe, categorizing them into two groups. The first group filtered leaders who were insiders whose careers followed a normal progression, and unfiltered leaders who either were outsiders with little experience or got their jobs through fluke circumstances. His finding was that whilst experience is important, the best leaders tend to be outsiders who don't have a great deal of experience. There is a myth in Nigeria that given the complexities of Nigeria, the office of the president is best occupied by someone with top political experience. But how true is that really? As a boy, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo was my president, a decorated former head of state who marked Nigeria's transition from military to civilian rule. By the time he left office, fuel price was at 75 naira per liter, GDP growth averaged 7.2%, Boko Haram was still budding, and corruption was still strategic. Years later, President Jonathan, a former governor of Bayata State, took over from President Yaradua of the Blessed Memory. By the time he left power, fuel price was at 87 naira per liter, GDP growth was at 5.4% annually, Naira is changed at 297 per dollar, Boko Haram gained prominence, and corruption became very famous. Succeeding Jonathan was President Mohammed Buhari, another former head of state. Under him, fuel prices at 265 Naira per liter with threats of increment. GDP growth is at a horrendous 2.2%, and Naira exchanges with dollar at 380 at CBN rates and 485 Naira at the Buru de Change or Black Market. Corruption has become so glorified to the point that animals now swallow money. The dead get political appointments and fainting has become a way to escape conviction or questioning why Boko Haram now competes national stakeholder status with headsmen and bandits. Notice something that all these men have top political experiences, yet Nigeria has graduated from bad to worse and now worst. Worst because we can't even imagine a Nigeria worse than this. And what we think is about them we tried people with little or no political experience. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> well, let, let, let me go first. There's a place for politics, and I think there's a place for actual governance. And uh, one of the people we've said, well, seemed to have done well was Fashola, when he was governor of Lagos State. And we, I think a lot of, a lot of us alluded to the fact that he seemed to concentrate on governance and left politics to the core politician. So uh, maybe we, we also, at the federal level, we need to get to a place where we don't uh, allow too much politics get into governance. Because when it becomes politics, it becomes, it's no longer about what is best for the people. At least Nigerian kind of politics is about how would keep being relevant. Interestingly, on my own side, it is called political leadership. So there's no silver bullet. Uh, you have people, like you've enumerated, who have experiences. But experience is a what? Mm. To, to me, experience is important. And uh, you should have some sort of experience, either in management, even in the private sector, before you take up political leadership. Uh, you have an example of Mr. Donald Trump, who was who is seen to be an outsider to Washington politics. He came, and we all know what we got. So he, there's no perfect way of describing it, whether you're an outsider. Fashola was seen to, was seen to be an outsider, and he seemingly did well. Now, there's another person who has a very tall CV in the international oil community, in this Nigeria. She had a bite at leadership as a minister of petroleum, and the story is with us. So, so uh, 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 my experience is really, really <laughs> important. Because when we employ in private sector, we don't just employ a fresh graduate to become a manager. The person grows, and, and when they branch out, sometimes they branch out and do well on their own. 
without any sort of experience. But you know, the story is actually between the lines. One of my best authors, Ryan Holiday, said the bad part of the story is never told when you're telling the glowing uh, outcome. So, so, and in politics, any mistake, any minute mistake will, co will, be a very, will, will cause a very big uh, damnation to the people. So political leadership experience is needed, either in private management or anywhere else. And uh, you can be an outsider to the political system. Insiders to political system seem to do well. Biden is doing well to my, by my, by my own estimation. And he's been there for 47 years. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree. I agree with you. I think we, we have a peculiar situation. Um, if I may put it that way, we have a peculiar situation. Um, um, the system, the entire system, the entire value chain of the system has been um, tainted with a warped value system. So I would, I would rather say political experience versus value-based, uh, you know, leadership. Because it's, I think what we, what we, what we, what we are looking for is um, we are looking for um, a critical mass of values-driven personnel. All right, so Mr. Samson, uh, can we get your opinion from, from, from your end? Okay, so um, uh, you have all striked it on the nail. I mean, uh, very right on point. And uh, the exception to it that I want to add to it is the fact that our leadership should be propelled by value as against experience in politics or not having experience in politics. It's actually a personal thing. If you do not carry the requisite value that is needed for growth of a society, there is nothing you want to do about it. You don't have it, you don't have it. So okay. the crops of leadership that we've had in time past were people who came into leadership based on their own personal interest. And they have driven those interests up to the point where they had to leave. You know, so we have not been fortunate enough to see leadership or to have leadership that are actually the people-oriented, value-oriented, or, or, or success-oriented. They've always pursued personal interest, personal opinion, you know, and that was actually how we got into the war of 1963 in the first instance. Yes, 1967, yeah? The Civil War then, it was actually personal vendettas, you know, that actually brought about uh, the challenge we now had to, that has metamorphosed into what we experience today. So if leadership has political experience, it's supposed to be again, you know, as against what we are now bantering on now, saying uh, maybe we should try and explore uh, people from outside political era. Political experience is supposed to help us to undo uh, manage political issues, but the crops of it, the main core of it is: do uh, does a leader do they re really have the value, you know, that can bring about the needed change in a polity? Thank you, Mr. Samson. That Samson. is the question that I keep asking everyone. I I sort of have some experience Thank why you, Pachola I agree with uh, was you leader said. in Lagos. And yes, can you I agree me? with something you said. You know, the problem in Nigeria is that Nigeria is persistently plunging into a sorry state of disrepair. And to salvage us from this mess, we don't need politicians. We need transformational leaders. And transformational leadership does not derive its legitimacy from political experience. It is a product of a centric <laughs> vision, people orientedness, and astute competence. And it doesn't have to be in politics. Wow. So voters should look out for people who are competent and people who have ideas. Okay. So Peter yes. is the next and he's asking a burning question of if we have sense in Africa. So right after this break, we'll have Peter. <laughs> 